The art barter is going to be 15 London-based artists, and each artist will have one piece of art in an exhibition, essentially. Um, but the exhibition has a bit of a twist because people can't come and buy the work, um, but they can barter for it. So they can offer anything except for money for any of the 50 works. And they have quite a mixture of artists. So we have some really well-known London artists like Tracy Amin, Adam Tark, Tim Noble, Sue Webster, Abigail Lane, Paul Fryer, Matt Collishaw, and then we have kind of up and coming people like Ollie Clegg and Philippa Haran, Tom Gallen, and then we have people that we kind of scoured the schools for. There's people like Laura Ristova. So it's a real mixture, and you won't know whose work is whose. And so people kind of really have to think about what it is that they're bartering for and really have to value it themselves and think what they could offer for it. Um, so that's the basic concept. This is actually the painting that's going into the. Um, is actually going to be going into it. It seems to me that if I have a suit next to a painting, I need to make that painting look like it's had as much work done to it as that suit has. So that's a kind of that's a, for me that's a kind of fair equivalent. It's really you can, it's tangible and you can see what's going on. Whereas with money, it just seems you know I charge that amount and you get this, but it, I almost want to say, I almost want to think oh well maybe that's a week's wages for him or two weeks' wages. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That to me is more direct. So what kind of things are you expecting people to come up with for a potential barters? I'm really hoping that we're going to get a lot of really broad, I mean, obviously it would be great if we have some people offering their houses, like in South of France or wherever or they may have a holiday house, artists. or, you know, uh, we have like some people in restaurants and things like that coming down, maybe offering like, you know, Meals for Life or a big party for like their loved ones. But then also, like, oh, we were talking to someone about that, um, you know, the odd things that might, might pop up, such as people that have an obsession with, <laughs> with being furniture. <laughs> so they could, like, offer themselves as a footstool for a month or something. <laughs> you never know if you meet the right artist and it makes the right connection. So I think there'll be a lot of quite funny, interesting right. things and, you know, it will be a big, big range. I think that it's, it's uh, for me, the most important thing was that it was a reassessment of value and worth. You know, for so long, money, money had been the sole indicator of an artist's worth. And I, I think it's so, that's so fickle, you know, because the recession comes along and then suddenly no one can charge the same prices. So that entire sort of um, structure or um, that entire sort of field of, of sort of indication has to be completely restructured. I think that's ridiculous, you know, why can't there be another way of assessing someone's artwork? Yeah, I really want people to come in and be like, okay, I have no idea how much this is worth, I have no idea who it's by, I have no idea whether I'm supposed to like it or not, what do I actually think? 